this video is being sponsored by Skillshare. Hello. Oh. Well, that feels fitting for the topic of this video. Things that I thought were going to be great and then burned me. Hello, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. Mm. And welcome to another Coffee with Kate, a sort of chatty video where I meander about a topic in a slightly less structured format. I actually tried to film two different versions of this video over the past, like, few months and it was never like quite coming together until I was like haha I kept accidentally turning it into a rant which is not what I'd intended it to be it's just that these stories burned me <laughs> I want to talk about um a book and a movie series uh epic saga that the writers basically broke either genre expectations kind of pretty intense genre rules I would say or character expectations um also the other one broke like just some general like <sighs> it's not the mandalorian but it is the last star wars trilogy so anyways <laughs> it broke so many things how dare it and i want to talk about how this book and this series basically taught me were examples of things i never want to do so you know that saying about how writers learn as much from reading the things they love the things they want to emulate as the things that they hated uh that's what we're focusing on today the things that just i would be so mad at myself if i did to my reader or my viewer right i also want to talk about in this whole thing um kind of not platform so much as my own considerations when I'm reviewing a book that's self-published versus traditionally published because um, after ranting the first time about this book, I looked more deeply and I think it was a self-published book and I realized that as someone with like a platform, I just didn't want it to be as much of an attack as it genuinely was. Like I was just so mad. Um, so I still wanna talk about it because it did teach me a lot of lessons, but anyways, it's all gonna come together, I hope. <laughs> I hope you will actually see this one. Yes, let me take a sip. So let's start with the book and genre expectations as a whole. Now, I'm someone who has written something before that violated genre expectations. In fact, it was a similar genre to the one that I read. Um, it was a mystery. So the book I was trying to write was a, a full out mystery. Some of y'all, if you've been on this channel for a while, would know Murder Mystery Tennessee is what my working title was. And I realized at the end of the first draft of Murder Mystery Tennessee that I had not put nearly enough clues in as to who the killer was. You know, and it's, it's interesting because it made sense in my head as I'm trying to sort of ravel this mystery back up. So I know who it is all along, but I didn't put enough worthwhile clues in and it just somehow, how did I get to 60 plus thousand words without realizing that? I can't say. But I did realize it, okay? I did realize it after the first draft. Would I wish I would have figured it out sooner? Yes, as one of the, the key things about a mystery <laughs> for reader expectations is that they're going to be able to guess. I'm not saying they're going to guess correctly, but you're going to be able to guess who the killer is. You are acting as a detective as much as the sort of main character often is or the actual detective E sort of character in the book if that's not the main character. But oftentimes it is the main character whether they, you know they happen upon something and they start to pull at this thread and unravel things, right? You can guess, okay? This book that I read was a cozy mystery and it was, it was pleasant. I enjoyed it. It was one of those things that I picked up from my library, off of an app, recommended. All I wanted was a cozy mystery. It was available, it was on audio, I was like, Yes, this is everything I need. This is my mood, is cozy mystery. It was my mood. 
stopped. <laughs> I'd been on a bit of an Agatha Christie kick and wanted to pivot to slightly more cozy. And I, I'm bringing this up to say that I did not Google the book beforehand. I didn't search it up on Goodreads, um, which I guess we can add on to this discussion because I'm curious if you'll look up every book you're gonna read on Goodreads first. <laughs> and I, I, I rarely do unless I'm in the bookstore and thinking about buying it. Um, if it's my library, it's like, well, I can just, you know, if it, if it doesn't work out, then it's fine. But this one was short. It was like a five hour audiobook and it was fine. You know, the banter was kind of cute between the main characters. And I, I liked, you know, the fast pace and, you know, the depth that this author was able to weave in. And it, it becomes more apparent to me as I am three hours in with a couple of inklings of who this might be four hours in and I'm actually less sure because we've now eliminated everyone. You know, there's only 45 minutes left. I'm like, you know, you, you know that there needs to be a wrap up chapter where they kind of show them afterwards. So 45 minutes, okay, okay, okay. Maybe I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about who it could be. I guess it could be like a grand betrayal and I don't know that there were any hints for it, but there could be that, uh, you know, 15 more minutes pass by. I still have not figured out who this killer is. Actually, I haven't even seen the killer um, except for that first dead body. Weird, but okay, okay. The rest of it has been pretty good. I'm not mad until I am very, 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 very mad. <laughs> because you know who the fucking killer was? Someone we'd seen on the page once who did not even have a name. They just went through paperwork. The main characters just went through paperwork and found that he'd been blackmailing the guy. But did we, the reader, have any inclination of that? No, had we even, we'd barely seen this dude before. I'm saying background character because she had to like put it in a line being like, well, I've last seen him at the store. What? <laughs> what? It, it felt like she'd gotten to the end of her mystery novel and was like, oh, I didn't put any clues in. And actually worse because like she didn't even have a killer. <laughs> She didn't have a killer in mind. She didn't backtrack from the killer. She just didn't even put him in the novel. In a mystery not The genre expectations are very clear. <laughs> that it is guessable. Not that I would get it right, but it was guessable. It is not guessable if you've seen the character once as a background character, unnamed, slightly moving through a store. We didn't, the motive wasn't even guessable. Like I'm okay with, I, I would genuinely be okay with not knowing the who, so long as at the end, the why made sense. Like the why we had, the mystery was the why more so than the, you know what I'm saying? Like I would have been okay with it, except that we didn't have any inclination of that. It was vaguely in the character of the person who died at the start of the novel to like sit out on their porch and watch their neighbors vaguely vaguely and I just I was so mad like I again I made a rant video once before and this was after already ranting to the boyfriend <laughs> like I, I was I was angry I was genuinely angry because the rest of it was pretty good and so you know what I did I went to Goodreads something I maybe should have done at the start <laughs> And I looked up to see if this had bothered anyone else. And of course it had. And a lot of people pointed out the same things I felt that actually the rest of it was pretty good. The main characters held the story well. I kind of, you know, their romance was cute and sweet as is like, that's what cozy mysteries are asking for. Vaguely set up some drama for the next book in the series if that's the direction they wanted to go. And then I'd say half of the reviews are like, you cannot guess who it is, that sucks. It is not a mystery. Like that is, that is what people were saying. It is not a mystery. It violated the genre expectations. So I guess I, I'm curious, one, if you've ever written something like that, if you like me have gotten to the end of a first draft or a second draft or something and been like, well, fuck. <laughs> and I also wanna know if you would've, if you'd Googled this before, cause if I had got on Goodreads and checked, I would have seen this, right? And I would not have chosen this book. I want a mystery because I like the little bit of puzzle aspect of trying to solve it. And if it's literally unsolvable, it's not a puzzle and it's not like, 
I, I would rather read a sweet romance, which I also like, but that's, you know, that's, that's not what you sold me. You get what I'm saying? There's also been, this is an aside, there's also been recently um, some book Twitter stuff that my co-writer sent me about romance novels that are a little bit like either heavier on the sex or less heavy on the sex being marketed with the covers in a way that like is less indicative of what they actually are. And so it's these expectations that a reader have. And I'd say a cover is, unless they're self-published, the cover is not the fault of the author, that's the fault of the publisher. But like not even having a mystery. <laughs> I've also tried writing a sci-fi before. <laughs> One of the, I think the first ever year that I did NaNoWriMo daily vlogs, I tried writing a sci-fi because it was a genre I'd never tried before and I thought it would be really fun. And I had this idea for this alien zoo, which I still think is a cool concept and I would totally read more about it because I know other people have done it. And I had less hard and fast rules that I think sci-fi needs. So I'm not saying this was a complete violation, but I definitely took it in a much more fantasy route because I just frankly not read enough sci-fi. Um, and a lot of people say the line between sci-fi and fantasy is like, people place it at different points too. It's just like generally broad speculative fiction. But I, as I was writing it, I was realizing that if I wanted to write a true sci-fi, which is how I'd envision this project, I would need to do more sci-fi specific research. So it's, what I'm saying is, I, I've done this before. You know, I hope I don't do it again. I hope I've learned enough to get the genre expectations of what I'm writing. But I'm not, I'm not faulting anyone for getting to that point or doing that on accident. I, I do find fault in, like, how did it get published? So when I ranted about this book, I did not realize it was a self-published novel. And as someone who's self-published and would love to be traditionally published in the future, I, I hold them to the same standards. Do I hold myself when reviewing them to the same standards? That's where my personal issue kind of diverges <laughs> as someone with a platform because, you know, traditionally published authors, you have the entire backing of a publishing house, which is incredible. And I think kind of help, helps to mitigate a little bit of the criticism to be like, well, the agent believed in this the editor believed in this and not just them, but like multiple people probably too, right? Like multiple people in the agency or multiple people at the publishing house believed in this novel. But when you're self-published, you don't necessarily have the backing of, you know, all these people who are professionals, right? And also as someone with a platform, it would be, I don't know. I just always, this is my personal struggle, right? Cause I don't know that it's right. Frankly, you know, I don't, you know, I, I guess I'm of two minds on this issue is that once you publish something out there, you are subject to the criticism people have about the book, not as you as a person, obviously, but like about the book. Um, but on the other hand, as someone who might have a little bit of power and another side of things, it's just like, I have to be more careful or I feel I have to be more careful in how I speak about stuff. And I don't know that that's necessarily right either, because again, it's, it's a valid criticism of this book. Like it violated mystery standards. So it's just, my brain is a jumble. It's a jumble, which is why I'm not naming it this time in my rant. I don't know ultimately that that's the right thing, but I'd also be very curious about y'all's opinions if you feel differently in uh, how you review self-published versus trad pub books. Um, and again, they're both books that have been put out there for consumption. So realistically from that standard, should there be any difference? Not really. You see, I can spiral myself back into different minds about this, right? But upon my research, the other interesting thing I found was that this writer had also written multiple other cozy mystery series, which leads me to believe that maybe they were trying to do something a little bit different and it just didn't hit. I think you can try to do something different and wiggle with maybe genre expectations, but I think this full on violation is something you should frankly not do, period. And genre expectations aren't the same thing as like common tropes or something, right? I think it's okay to mess around with tropes. It's, you know, there's very few actual genre expectations I think that are in place that need to happen. Like a romance, if it's a romance and not like a contemporary, um, but a romance, it needs to have kind of this happily ever after thing or happily for now or whatever version of that you want. But ultimately it ends up happy and uplifting in whatever way. You know, there could have been drama throughout, but ultimately this end couple and the romance will end up this way. If it's a contemporary that also has a strong romantic element, it doesn't need to do that. 
but those are the expectations of these, you know, distinctly different genres. Mystery, it's that you'll be able to guess alongside the mystery. <laughs> it is guessable. Fantasy, sci-fi, speculative fiction as a whole might be that I'm expecting a world to be different from our own. So if it was just like our world and you know, like that would, it would be a clear violation. <laughs> I'd be very curious for the genres that you write, what sort of violations you think What's kind of the hard and fast line? Like what's the one thing <laughs> that makes it this? So anyways, lots of questions for you there. And yet I have more. Good thing I still have half of my coffee left, but I am going to flip over to uh, Kate at her desk. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's see if I can do it without spilling. <gasps> Hello, I'm back and with a hat. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, this video is being sponsored by Skillshare. And as a lot of you will know, I did recently start a podcast. It's something that I've been researching for like a year. I'd had the idea kind of mulling around in the back of my head. And I used several Skillshare videos actually to help me <laughs> figure out what the heck I was doing. One of them is Podcasting Secrets, How to Start Your Own Podcast by Nikayla Matthews Okome, who by the way, started the Side Hustle Pro podcast. Amazing. And she really takes you through all of the steps that you could possibly need. She walks you through the entire process, including showing it on her screen so that you can follow along at the same time. I especially loved one of the exercises she has you do, which is writing a profile of your ideal listener. It's something that I see a lot in common with, I guess it's any creation, but with books as well, where you have like, uh, this book is for this person. And oftentimes it's something that like you yourself would want to read and people like you interested in X, Y, Z. And that was kind of what I felt the vibe of when I was trying to come up with my podcast is the thing that I wanted to hear but hadn't really seen enough of yet. So it's just very cool to always kind of keep that ideal listener in mind. I also really loved how to make a podcast, plan, record, and launch with success. I think I've actually mentioned this in another video when I was talking about Skillshare by John Lago Morsino. Because Skillshare doesn't have any ads and it's especially curated, you can easily find your topics of interest and also browse the original and staff pick options, which is where I find most of the stuff that I love. It's just been great to dabble in extra hobbies and especially the ones that I've wanted to like continue pursuing after learning about them, like podcasting. <laughs> especially as podcasting companies are acquiring audiobooks and starting to kind of push those forward. I know a lot of writers are starting to record their own audiobooks and start uploading them either to YouTube or Spotify. So these are the kind of things that are just nice to sort of take in. And the first 1000 of y'all to click my link down below or use my code Kate Kavanaugh will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can kind of start dabbling and playing around with all sorts of different hobbies and creative outlets too. And thank you once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive back again. Oh, she back again. I also didn't plan this well, so I no longer have coffee and it is now margarita with Kate, but it's fine. <laughs> so I have so many thoughts and feelings about this most recent trilogy of Star Wars. And I've talked a lot about this before, I think on a live stream back then, I really <laughs> delved in, but it, it taught me so many things about what I never wanted to do. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna just like vaguely talk about some of them because vague is apparently all I can do without yelling at the camera. So one of the things that killed me is that Finn was one of my favorite characters. <laughs> and I feel like, you know, there's a lot of reasons why I think personally the most recent trilogy did not really work. Um, one of that being they didn't have a clear direction and they switched directors throughout telling the story who had their own vision. So it was not cohesive. You know, there were elements that I loved, um, but they were all very individual elements. Um, so as a whole, the story just did not work. And one of the sacrifices I think that was made was in Finn's character. So we have this really cool concept that just dies after the first movie. I'm, I'm just my head. Um, the third movie also had like, a complete, like Finn needed to tell Ray something and that's never addressed again. And then I looked this up because I was bad and apparently J.J. Abrams was wanting to say that Finn was like force sensitive and that's what he was gonna tell Ray. I cannot. It's fine. It's fine. 
That's fine. As someone who's trying to write a series, my pirate series of my book series, someone who's trying to write something like the Meridian Maps, you will inevitably be introducing a lot of characters along the way that will come either in or out of the story. Some are gonna die valiantly, some others not so valiantly. <laughs> some we will only see for a moment as they touch our main characters, but I think to just let a main character who you've built up so much here just peter out, it felt as an audience member, as a viewer, <laughs> as someone who loves Star Wars, as like a slap in the face, right? The original trilogy had, you know, bits and pieces of where we were focusing in on one or more of the main characters and that was fine. And they just could not freaking get it together in this one. I think series can really work when someone starts as a main character and kind of de-escalates into like a minor character and then a character we like vaguely see again. Like I'm a fan of romance where they do that a lot, where the two main characters to start with um, become just kind of recurring characters uh, in the series as it progresses. And I love that, but you know that going in it was a purposeful thing because their arcs were completed, right? Finn's arc was never completed in a way that I found satisfying <laughs> for the hype that they had built up, right? So the expectations for the character are like through the roof. And then what was actually delivered after the first movie, it was just like, anyways, main characters. <laughs> characters that the audience was supposed to fall in love with. I just think that you can't do what they did. Also taught me, somehow Palpatine returned is never, somehow blink happened, is never a good idea. <laughs> the confusion and rage, I felt. Um, and now there's an important clarification between uh, like characters not knowing how something happened and that being okay as it's something that they're gonna kind of figure out as time goes, but also be the audience being like, what the fuck? Like you can, I think you can do one or the other. <laughs> And depending on how closely you view the characters, like if you're experiencing it first person, I think gets away with this a lot, just being like, I don't know what's happening because that's that's the lived experience of the character in the moment, right? So we, the audience, also don't know what's happening. But to do somehow blink happened and just move on with the story, <laughs> it's not gonna work. You know, when the opening scroll <laughs> happens and it's like a, basically the same version of somehow Palpatine returned. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's not even like Dios ex machina at this point, right? Like it's not, is it? It's not like they were trying to get them out of a situation so much as they were trying to like poof a situation in um, that they weren't, that did not, was not apparent that they were building up to. I'm also just personally mad with the direction and I guess that's a different issue. <laughs> Me being personally mad at the direction is a separate issue from the actual execution, right? So this is kind of an execution lesson that it should never for the reader be, for the readers in the character be somehow this happened. And if it was like an exploration of how it happened, you could almost get away with it. But again, this has had two movies and then the third movie is like, somehow this happened. No. Now as someone who's watched the original trilogy, way more times than I care to count. And also as someone who actually enjoys the prequel trilogy, I think more with age, which seems to be the opposite for some people, but I think I can appreciate the attempt. I, I don't know if space is the answer for me here or what, but it was just my expectations and then the disappointment because my expectations were that I was gonna get another original trilogy. There were, and I was, annoyed like a lot of people were, vaguely annoyed, that the first movie felt very much like a rehash, um, almost playing back exactly what we'd already seen, just with different characters in the space, you know, but I was okay with it. Um, it was the quick downhill without a line of sight that was really frustrating, especially from a huge company. You know, I, we all know stories where they've a writer has started somewhere and not had the whole series planned because obviously that is so much time and effort and you know things will inevitably change as you write it but we've all we've all read the books where the writer had, wrote themselves into a plot hole or wrote something that they now have to quickly diverge away from um but that's like one creative person right doing this thing this is a whole fucking company this was a whole company i just anyways Genre expectations, 
fulfilling character promises. Is that the way we can phrase it? And know somehow this happened. <laughs> I think those are the biggest lessons um, that have really just stuck with me and continue to mull in my brain. Um, so I'm very curious for y'all what those lessons are, if you've had similar lessons um, and what sort of media you were consuming that taught you those, and also just other lessons you've learned through watching media that you unfortunately didn't like or didn't hit. Um, I've definitely written stories where I was inspired by a thing and didn't like how they did it. Like cool concept, but you really like it. It wasn't what I thought it was gonna be, you know? And so now I want to pivot and write what I thought it was going to be. So it, it, there's inspiration everywhere and there's lessons to be had everywhere, which is very cool. So that's the positives I'm taking away <laughs> from these things. But that is gonna be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you very soon with a new video. Bye.